today we're going to have a poke around this beautiful forest to see what we can find. Well, welcome to this week's episode of Warwick Nailers Boomerang Adventures. Today I'm going to a forest, I'm in here now actually, and it's uh, quite a pretty spot, it's not that far from my house. It's made up of predominantly Murray pine, or white cypress as we also call it, and yellow box trees and uh, bull oaks as well. Yellow box is uh, eucalyptus and bull oak is uh, a native oak that we have in Australia as well. Now this time of the year is quite pretty because there's a number of native flowers that are out and there's also a few other things that are unique to the area that I'd like to show you. So thanks for coming on board and let's go see what we can find. This is interesting. I um, have been wanting to get a wallaby for ages on this channel. A swamp wallaby they're called around here. And I've finally done it, but it's uh, a little bit of a letdown because it's um, dead. It's been hit on the road, side of the road. It's fairly fresh, it's gone stiff, but uh, that's just the rigor mortis um, and the ants are into it. But uh, if you ever come across a dead marsupial on the side of the road, and it's fairly fresh, just check to see if it's a female or a male, and then if it's got a pouch, and that's, this is a female, and there's this pouch there. Um, so in there is probably a dead, tiny little joey. And um, yeah, it's being dead. Uh, this mother's been dead for too long to for that joey to live but if it's a fresh dead wallaby or a kangaroo or a wombat it's good just to have a check in the pouch because there might be a savable joey in there and there's people throughout Australia that take care of um, young joeys that have been uh, hit or the mothers have been hit on the side of the road so she's a, a fully grown wallaby I think and um, yeah, they're pretty small compared to kangaroos. They're quite small. Well, this, this variety is. And yeah, I'll, just, I'll stand it up. I'll just show you how tall they are. So quite a quite a bit smaller than a um, than a kangaroo. Anyway, it's a bit it's a bit sad. Yeah. Almost identical. They're just a bit more solid than a kangaroo, all of this. I'll, I'll drag it off the road because they can be a little bit dangerous. Carcass on the, on the roads, on the edge of the road, so yeah. We'll just leave it there. And the eagles or the crows will pick it a bit and there'll be nothing left over in a week, in a week or, or two. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a meat ant nest that's been done over so badly as this one. It's still alive and managing to live, but it's been really badly attacked by an echidna or two, probably just one. And it's just amazing how much they've turned that soil over. All those holes have been just dug up by an anteater that's about this big. They're, a, they're quite, a, the funny thing about these ants is I'm not sure if it happens to other ants, but if you look how aggressive they are, I've stomp on this and they'll all start climbing up my, my boots um, and trying to 
kill me, is that if you get enough traffic near these ant nests, they actually start to tame down and they stop attacking you. And I've never um, seen a nest where that doesn't happen. They are a, they're like a, you wouldn't think you could tame ants down, but you can. These put out a real pungent smell once they get going. They start warning all their mates to come out. So that, that echidna would have been getting down as deep as it could to get to the brood or the, the young grubs, the developing ants and the eggs, so it could get a nice feed. And uh, of course it didn't get the queen, she's probably down about that far. So it didn't uh, knock out the, the nest completely. Anyway, that uh, echidna will be back one day and it'll get a whole bunch of more grubs. Oh, it's got one up my leg here. Yeah, there they are. They're quite, uh, you got a nasty bite, they can actually draw blood if they get you in the right spot. They get you in a bit of skin that's, um, that's thin. Yeah. All right. Enough of a play. We'll leave them alone. Now look at these things. These are a type of fungus and operate the same way as mushrooms and uh, toadstools and things like that and I actually don't know the proper name of these ones but I call them puffballs because that's about as big as they get that size of a, a grapefruit and what will happen is this thing will dry out it'll have a little split on the top or a couple of spots where it splits and then this, all the seed in there that will become very volatile and like a like a bull dust and when the wind blows it actually drives it out in like a cloud of dust this sort of greeny brown dust and it's uh, all, all the rain will come down and and bang on the shell that's left and that activates or sends a shock wave and that puffs up the, the dust as well so under here it's interesting because there's one there there's one there, and there's one up here. I reckon something's kicked that. Oh, it's coming out of here. There. Yeah. So that's probably all one plant under the ground, probably following a dead root or something. And it sent up three different fruits to continue the reproduction cycle. And that's about all that's going on there. Oh, there's another one there actually, a little one. Never really came to much. So that's a, and inside that stuff here, there we go. That yellow stuff, that actually dries out and that's what becomes that powder, that reproductive powder. Yeah, and that, I'm not touching it with my hands because I'm gonna take a pretty good guess that that's poisonous. So leave that stuff alone as far as touching it with your skin, but it's uh, interesting to look at anyway. This time of the year, mid-spring, and all the flowers are coming out. This plant here comes out in this area of the world in Oh, plague proportions basically it's a it's a noxious weed it's called Patterson's curse by the farmers and it's called Salvation Jane by the honey uh, farmers they or the beekeepers so guess who calls it what because these things have an awesome nectar it's a beautiful um, yeah just come this way under the out of the rain just under the rain um, it's got a beautiful amount of nectar and it's a good quality, makes a good quality honey. But uh, 
it takes over the land at the same time so it's uh, both a, a blessing and a curse but mostly it's a curse and mostly it gets called Patterson's curse but it's it is pretty and um, for people coming into farming areas they'll often pick the flowers and put them on a vase and that's really strange for farming types to see Patterson's curse in a vase on someone's table but uh, yeah it's um, a little bit prickly and a bit unpleasant but at least it has a pretty flower it's not a complete um, waste of space a leaf grasshopper here and it's so well camouflaged as soon as that lands I can't see it again he's just around here somewhere he'll jump up in a second there he is right there look how well camouflaged he is when he flies he's got yellow yellow on his wings but I'll see if I can catch it Beauty. Look at that. Quite pretty. But, um, yeah. There's all sorts of those things. Some of them look just like a leaf. And that one's not the shape of a leaf, but it's so well camouflaged, you can't see it until it flies. found a little scratch, which is interesting. Didn't know what it was to start with, but it's actually a galah digging, and this is evidence that it was a galah. Its uh, feather is pink and, they call it a pink and grey galah, and um, one of Australia's larger parrots. And they go after bulbs in the ground, so they put their beak in, scratch them up, and chew off the husk and eat the inside. It's just a little interesting thing to look at when you're walking around. Well, of all the animals that I've seen died getting caught in a fence, this would have to be the most dramatic. This kangaroo has jumped through, gone through one wire, Flipped his body over, twitched, twitched himself on this this one here, and then he's fallen back, and it's hooked over the back of his head. So there's no way he was going to get out of that without human intervention. But it's actually, even though it looks quite gruesome, this is probably the, the best way to go because it was strangled to death, I'd say, in a couple of minutes. But I've seen, uh, and I've had that on the channel before, a, a kangaroo gets hooked on its uh, back leg or front leg and, it, and then it dangles there for uh, probably a week or more and it runs out of, of water and, and dies or just dies from the, the trauma of it. So um, it's certainly not any way I'd want to die, but uh, this would be the, the choice way of dying for a, a kangaroo caught in a fence. And he's been dead for, or she, been dead for probably uh, months anyway. That's sort of really mummified, that skin. And there's not even a stink left on that carcass. So, yeah, pretty sort of, pretty crude. But, um, yeah, this gives you a bit of a look at life and death out in the bush. Well, thanks for watching this week's episode. I uh, am back home at the moment and uh, she's really starting to dry out. This is actually, you know, two weeks later. I took that footage a couple of weeks ago and um, it was a little bit greener and a bit nicer. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the theme music of how to revamped 
I uh, had my favourite music production team working on it and uh, so I perhaps I overdid it a little bit but uh, I couldn't help myself so I'll settle down with the next episode. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure what I'll put together next week but I'll see you next week. <laughs>